we are about to start on what I absolutely am extremely excited and thrilled about, and that would be menus. Menus are something that I've always wanted, and I am so happy that they are finally here. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's a menu? Well, a menu is kind of a navigation system that you can put anywhere in your virtual tour. But it's not only just a navigational system. It's navigation, it's information, it's customization, it's linking the client to the end user or the end user to the client and it, it just it, it makes things really really good and really really nice and, and it adds features that can be completely customized to do it however it is that you like and that is su something that is really really exciting for me a prime example of where you could use a really good menuing system and that would be like let's say you're doing a virtual tour of a college a campus it's huge. It's ginormous. It's a big project. And you just, you can't really fit that all into one thumbnail bar. You, you're just, you're not going to do it. it. It's too big. It's going to be too clumsy. But what you can do is you can simply have separate virtual tours for separate sections of, let's say, this, this college campus. Dorm room east, dorm room west. Uh the science department, the arts and literature department. You can have separate tours from that and you can link to it through the menu, menuing system. And it just makes everything so much better. So they can sit there and click on dorm room east and it'll open up that virtual tour to dorm room east and they can travel around through there and experience it. Then they can drop it down and they can go to the arts and, uh, arts and literature department and they can scan around through there and travel through there. It just it makes things more module. It makes things more easier to navigate through, more streamlined, and also much easier on you while creating this. So let's just jump ahead and let's just actually build one of these menus and we'll see just how well it actually works. So just like with everything else, if you're gonna add this in there, you go up to the add tab and you click on menu, click the plus sign, and then it's gonna bring up the default menu. And over on the right-hand side, you have your area here for your block that you can go through and make your changes. So you have menu UI, content, and colors. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna open up the menu UI. Now, in the menu UI, first thing you wanna do is kinda of decide where you wanna have your menu at. Do you want the menu in the upper left, upper right, dead center in the top, dead center in the bottom? You know, just wherever it is that works for you and for your virtual tour. Me personally, I like to keep it in the upper left. It's just kind of a traditional place to put it, and I think it, it works the best that way. So I'm going to leave it there in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm actually going to take it off of Fixed. Now, if you remember from the thumbnail UI, Fixed is going to set a area that it's all going to fit into, and it fits it, and that's it. It doesn't change. It, it stays in that Fixed size for this i don't want that i don't want that at all i want it to be unfixed now there might be a reason to have it fixed absolutely by all means it's a very viable option and there's probably some cases for it me personally i don't find it for my style i prefer it to be not fixed now before i do anything else now i want to go down to content now i, I know kind of jumping around a little bit here but just follow along and I want to add a logo. And I'm going to use the same logo I have before. And also keep in mind you can upload new logos right through that dialog box. Now, I want to change the image width and the image height. So right here is where you make those adjustments. Now, I can keep it this size if I want. But that's a little too small. Let's go a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna bring out the width to about the, the width that I want is about right there. Now, you know it's a little cut off on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna fix that with the image height. There we go. Now it fits in there. It's a proper size. It looks good to the formatting of 
the virtual tour. Okay, so we have that in there. Next thing up is menu height and submenu height. So menu height and submenu height is pretty much only going to increase right in here. It's going to increase just how tall each of the menu and submenu items are. It's not going to affect the font. It's just the font's going to stay pretty much where it is in the center of that field, but it's going to make it bigger and smaller. So depending on what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve, you can completely change that in the submenu height. I just put it back to zero, which is pretty much default. Enable toggle. Toggle is this right here. This allows for the user to show and conceal the menu. And open on start. Now, I like to keep it open on start, and I like to enable a toggle. But if you remove the toggle, it's always going to open on start, and it's always going to be there. It can't be removed. It's permanent. So we're going to put the toggle back on and open on start. Transparency. It's going to adjust the transparency of your menu. And margin. Margin, just like in a thumbnail UI, if you want to move it from the left and from the top, you want to move it in towards the center, you would use margin to do that. And normally, I would suggest having it a little bit off of the, the edges of your tour. Just looks better, looks a little smoother. Doesn't look like it's being cut off. For margin, if you use the, the slider right here, it's gonna move everything just down a diagonal way towards the center of the screen in that vector right there. Um, I don't really like that. So I like to come in here and I like to do it manually. So I'm gonna move the margin back to zero, come in here and manually do it. So we can go right there, top 15, and left 15, and that's gonna bring it down and over in the padding. Padding is right here. So what the padding is gonna do is it's going to increase the background behind your entire menu, and it's going to increase it outwards from it at an X, X amount of space. And if you use the slider, it's gonna be it's gonna be the same all the way around. So if you move it 15, it's gonna be 15 on the left, it's gonna be 15 on the right, 15 on top, 15 on the bottom. But you can com completely customize that by clicking on the conf little configuration icon here. And you can sit there and you can change, let's say you want it on the top and you want it on the bottom only. You don't want left and right padding. So then you just come over here and you remove the left and right padding. And that's gonna give you a little bit of padding on the top, a little bit on the bottom. Or if you want it on the sides, you can add it on the sides and remove it from the top. And border width. Just throw a border on there. Now the border right now is black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump down here into colors real fast. And I'm just gonna change the border color to a more visible. Well, there we go. Okay, so it's white. So you can go pretty thick with the border. Just as you see there. But normally just a three or four for me works pretty good. Just gives it a little outline there. I like that. And then border radius. Border radius, of course, is going to radius the corners. And with this, you can completely customize this as well. Uh, if you just want just the tops to be radius or just the bottoms to be radius or just the right side to be radius, you can do that, again, by going in here and doing custom selection. I'm going to get rid of the radius, and I'm going to go in here. So I'm going to do top. As you can see, just the top left is now radius. That's it. Nothing else is radius. And I'm going to do the bottom. Put that at 15. So now I got a nice little, like, Sharp corners in the top right and bottom left and rounded on the opposing corners. And it also does it to your toggle icon. So it just gives it a nice little look. It's kind of neat. And I mean, even if you wanted to go a little crazy with it, you can do 
just one corner and give it just a cool little look, just like so. It's pretty neat. Again, fully customizable. All right, image width and image height, we already went over. That's how you control the, the height and the width of the image inside your menu. Now, image padding, as you see here, image padding is, what this is gonna do is it's gonna put a padding around the image. Now, you might be thinking, wow, what's the difference between that and and padding well I'll show you if you if you pay attention here you'll see that image padding it's putting a background padding just around the image only the image and if you go to padding padding is putting a padding around the menu so this is your menu right here this is the padding around the menu so it'll keep your menu items and your image within within the padding and if you're doing image padding then it's going to just pad the image and not the the menu itself here comes a fun part and this is content this is where you actually start building your menu and it's really very simple to do menu text settings pretty straightforward very very standard you have your orientation of your text you have style of your text whether it's italicized bold or underlined you have text size, so you can change up the size of your text. You have right here, you can choose just through a just a, a slew of fonts, so you can customize out your fonts. And same with the submenu text settings. It's exactly the same as the menu settings. Now right here, you have your first menu item. As you see right here, that's a default item. Now I wanna change that, and I'm gonna change this to Let's call it key features. And I cannot spell. Key features. And set the check mark there. Okay, we got key features here. I'm gonna add a sub menu. And in this one, I'm going to call this lobby. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna add another sub menu. And I'm gonna call this one comedy club. All right, and let's add one more. Let's put the roof in there. Roof view. Okay, so now you can see over here that we have these feet, these options under key features. Great, but what are we gonna do with them? Yeah, you have a list, but what else can you do? Well, if you come over here to your sub menu, you'll see that there is a link icon. Click on that link press the plus button here and you can choose right here you can choose a panel and let's see the first one was lobby so we're going to select that under comedy club we're going to select acme comedy and roof view we are going to select roof two there we go now when you drop this down these right here are now links to other panoramas. And let's go take a look at that. All right, I'm just gonna move to the living room. Yeah. Under key features, we have lobby. There we are, here's the lobby. Comedy club, here's the comedy club. And roof view. And here's the roof view. So you can see right there that you can use this for navigation to bring you to key features in your, in your virtual tour. Now, we're going to go back to the tour. And I'm going to add another menu. And this one I'm going to call Contact. If I can type. There we go. We're gonna add submenu. We're gonna add three more submenus. First one is gonna be agent email. Click okay. And we're gonna put a link in there. So I'm gonna click on link again. And in the link, I'm gonna do mail to semicolon. 
And this is just a fake email address, just for demonstration purposes. We're gonna click OK on that. Second one is gonna be agent contact. And I'm gonna put a link in there. That's gonna be um, caldwellbanker.com. So if you notice, I put HTTP, semicolon, front slash, front slash, www. You, you have to put the full URL in here for it to work properly. Okay, so in here, I'm gonna put a Zillow link for the area that this that this uh, condominium is at, or this penthouse is located. At. I'm just gonna say Zillow and click okay. And I'm gonna put the new link in and I'm gonna paste it. There we go. All right, now let's go take a peek at that. All right, so here we are. Again, we have our key features here. And right here we have agent email, agent contact, and Zillow. So agent email is going to open up a your default email program, which I'm not going to do because it's just, but you get the idea of it. Agent contact. That's pretty much a bring up a website and it brings it up in a new tab. So you're not losing your virtual tour, which is very considerate. And then Zillow. Here we go. So if the agent wants to have a, a list of other nearby things for, for whatever reason, you know, or anything, actually any kind of website like if they want a link to the property listing for this place you could have it right into there where it has just uh, the website that has all the photos and video and all the information on it you could do that right through this okay so right in here you have again we can add another link to this and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna put it under key features and under key features i'm gonna put a title I'm just going to call it, this agent has another listing. Or let's just say that this penthouse is even bigger than it actually is, and it has a whole other wing. So we're going to call this the East Wing. And we're going to click OK, and I'm going to put a link in here. And the link is actually going to be a Teleport Me link right from here. So this is another... A virtual tour of mine. I'm going to use this as an example to show you how you can link another tour within your tour. So you just come in here to your share and you grab whatever setting you want here and select link and then copy it. And then you paste it right into here. Click OK. Let's go take a peek. So Key features, we're gonna have East Wing, just it's it's fake, but we're gonna use this as an example. And click on that, and here we go. We're in the tour. Pretty neat, huh? So if you have separate separate areas that you want to go to and you want to use it through your menu, you can do it just like this and actually link different virtual tours from one. All right, so that is pretty much covering what you can do with the menu. Now the next and final step is actually gonna be coloring it. Now, I kinda like the color that it is. Now, since my client is with this specific real estate company, she requires colors, you know, a branding colors. And the branding colors for her is actually a dark blue and white. So I'm going to change the background color to a dark blue. I'm going to go right into here, and I'm going to grab a dark blue. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to make the borders white. Perfect. The menu, same color. So I'm going to change the menu background color. Actually, I'm going to keep the menu background color to what it is. I'm going to change the menu hover background color. And I'm going to change that to, let's just switch it to this ugly color right there. All right. There we are. So 
as you're hovering over, it's going to change colors with it. So you can see exactly where your mouse is landing. Nice, huh? Just adds a nice little elegant touch to your menu. And then we have menu text color, menu background color, which we've already changed, submenu text color. So if you want to change up the colors on here, and we have submenu background color and submenu hover color, which we've already done. All right. I hope this helps. This is a very, very exciting new feature that Teleport Me has brought in. And I love it. And I'm, I'm glad that they've done this because it is definitely a premium feature. So thank you.